The Prime Minister described the situation as one of the utmost gravity. And now, let us go to the West Coast, where they are having a fantastic premiere of that super-sensational million-dollar epic, Kiss of Blood. This is a premiere like they had in the good old days. Everybody who is anybody is here. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's a long way from here, Carlotta, baby. <laughs> a long, long way. Oh, I made myself this bed. I'll just have to learn to like it. Live with it. Hello, darling. Hi. Anything exciting in the news? A uh, man said there's going to be a war, I think. <laughs> well, that's not new. Hungry? Mm-hmm. Steak and salad, okay? Okay. Uh, do you have a good work session? No. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the problem? I don't know. Well, that first draft is due in two months, Edna. Yeah, I just can't seem to get it down. Well, why not? I can't concentrate. Up here... A million miles from no place. Maybe that's why. Well, but you are the one who wanted to get away from the hustle and the bustle and the hurly-burly. Yeah, believe me, I don't miss it. I'm I'm happy to be up here. Then why can't you write? Because, well, Carlotta, because I've, I've got a guilty conscience. I feel guilty about you. Me? Mm -hmm. See, I don't need people. I don't need parties, the theater, opening nights. I don't either. But, Carlotta, you were always so... I was always... what? Always in the middle of it, in the, in the middle of a whole world of excitement and glamour. No, no, darling. I wasn't in the middle of it. I was on the fringes. I was merely one of 2,470,000 aspiring young actresses. <laughs> and that's just one year's crop. Yeah, but I have a feeling it must be so dull for you up here. Dull? I can read, I can paint. And I get the feeling that I'm dull, too. Edmund. No, dear, let me say this. I'm, I'm just a writer. Just a writer. You're the... Best, and most... I'm not even the kind of writer who gets his name in the paper. Well, not the part of the paper anybody bothers to read. Oh, darling, you mustn't run yourself down. My book, my latest book, what is it concerned with? <laughs> you said you'd explain it to me. Well, in this book, I explore the pupil and the larval stages and the development of the caddis fly. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Oh, but I'm sure it must be very interesting. Really? To whom? To, to those people who would be interested. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you find it exciting, don't you? Well, yes, because it is exciting. You see, Carlotta, the, the caddis fly encloses himself in what he thinks is a golden protective sheath. But in reality, it's his coffin. Ah, that sounds good. And the fish, the fish that prey upon him, they also meet their doom. That sounds even better. Because the fish, in their turn, are eaten by other predators. Well... You've got plenty of action. <laughs> and listen, the largest and most powerful predator is man. Consider how we in our turn are eaten, not by stronger carnivorous, but by our own artificially induced anxieties and tensions. But that sounds great. <sighs> yeah. But it's not the kind of thing that'll head a bestseller list or get me on the talk shows. Is that what you want? No, but... But what? <laughs> well... I have an idea. It's what you would want. Edmund, I'm happy. I'm very happy. I've got you, and you're everything I could wish for. Come in. Oh, Sheriff. Good afternoon, Mr. Churchill. Miss Churchill? Well, you're just in time for dinner, Sheriff. Well, thank you both very kindly, but I happen to be here in line of duty. Oh, you mean there's a possibility you may have to arrest me or Mr. Churchill? <laughs> or maybe both of us. No, I, I don't think so. Well, what can we do for you, Sheriff? Well, now, Mr. Churchill, it's about an old friend of yours named Mike Perry. M Mike Perry? The Mike Perry? Killer Mike Perry. He's a friend of yours, Edmund? That's what we've been told. Well, you learn something every day. 
After all these years, they finally did catch up with Killer Mike. They got him on a charge that can stick. And what does he go ahead and do? Smooth as you please, he just busts his way out of jail. And he's here? He's up here? Well, no, he probably ain't up here. Well, then why are you... The big city cops and the federals, they went and compiled this list of all his friends. You were one of his friends, Edmund. Well, 20 years ago, we went to school together. And that's what I mean. We've got to run down those leads. You uh, seen him around here, Mr. Churchill? No, Sheriff. If you do, you'll get in touch. Certainly. Well, I just done my day's work. Drive 20 miles up to see the Churchills. Ask my two questions and I'll drive 20 miles back to town. <laughs> well, I'm sorry I bothered you, folks. That's quite all right. Oh, drop in again, any time. Well, goodbye now and have a nice evening. Oh, uh, are you going to take part in the annual fly casting contest week from Saturday, Mr. Churchill? You couldn't keep him away. Well, I almost won last year, remember? Well, Frank Miller over at the motel asked me to remind you. You haven't sent in your entry fee. It's got to be paid by tomorrow. All right, thank you. I'm not going to be disqualified on a technicality. Uh, Would you take the money to him, Sheriff? Oh, sure thing. Uh, Darling, do you have five dollars? Mm-hmm. It's gone up to ten this year. We have twice as many prizes. Oh, well, here you are, Sheriff. Right. Well, let me know if you hear anything or see anything. Good night. Good night. Edmund? This gang leader? This Mike Perry, how could he possibly have been a friend of yours? Well, we were roommates in college. No. He's an educated man, Carlotta. Then how could he... Rob? Kill? I don't know. And how could you associate with a gangster? Well, he wasn't a gangster in those days. Actually, he was a history major. Darling, do you know something? If this were a movie, that door would open right now. And he'd storm in here with a gun in his hand. (laughs) No, he wouldn't do that. He'd knock on the door and he'd politely ask permission to come in. And he'd say to me, Well, Eddie, I'm here to collect. Collect? What? The debt I owe him. What? What do you owe him? Well, it's hard to say, Carlotta, on the face of it. I owe him $3,000. $3,000? $3,000 can mean a little or a lot. Depends on the situation. To me, it once meant life itself. But you never told me. It was tuition and living expenses for my senior year. There would be a job waiting for me in June. A job in research. A job I dreamed about. But I would need the degree. Well, my uncle, who was executor of my father's estate, gambled away the money. And are you about to tell me that Mike Perry gave you the 3000 Yes. Where'd he get the money? He robbed a bank. He what? Yeah. He robbed a bank. But... He came into my room that day and he said, Eddie, nobody has the right to be that down in the mouth. You look as if you're ready to hang yourself. And I said I was. And he said, kid, tomorrow morning, I'm going to lay that 3 thou right in your hot little hand. And he did. And when I asked him where he got it, he told me. He robbed a bank. And you believed him? Oh, he did. I said to him, how could you? And he said, they got plenty of money. They'll never miss it. But for you, it's the end of the world. And you took that money? I took it. Because at that time, without that money, it would have been the end of the world for me. But Carlotta, I'll tell you this. I repaid the bank. You did? After I sold my first book. I sent them 3000 in cash. Anonymously, of course. Oh, well then, then you don't owe anybody anything. No, that's not true. I'm still indebted to Mike Perry. Well, I'm sure he doesn't need your $3,000. They say he has millions. Well, I don't owe him the money, exactly. You see, what I owe him is uh, a favor... What kind of a favor? I don't know. Whatever he asks. What could he ask of you? Well, when he gave me the money all those years ago, he said, Eddie, one day I'm going to come to you for a favor. Maybe to save my life the way I just saved yours. And you better be good for it. 
Well, there isn't anything you can do for him, Edmund. It's all ancient history. It's 20 years. That's so long ago. That's another world. Yes. And so much has happened to, to both of you. <laughs> oh, listen, I'd venture to say he doesn't even remember you. I just can't get used to the idea. What idea? What idea? Edmund, the idea of Mike Perry being a college man and your roommate... When was the last time you saw Mike Perry? When? Or can't you even remember? Oh, yeah, I can remember. The last time I saw Mike Perry was about 30 minutes ago. Look out for the quiet people. At any rate, Mike Perry, a lord of the underworld, has come to this remote mountain area to collect a debt, a debt of 20 years standing. But is Edmund Churchill ready, willing, and able to pay it? I shall return with further news of the principal and interest shortly in Act Two. Ladies, what do you know about your husbands? To Carlotta Churchill, Edmund, her husband, was mild, self-effacing, unassuming, a writer of books on nature. Now she has discovered that Edmund is providing refuge for Mike Perry, an underworld overlord, who is a fugitive from justice. Why? Well, it seems the two men are old friends. He's here? Mike Perry is here? Yes, Carlotta. Where? In my studio, above the barn. Then... then you lied to Sheriff Parker. Yes. But... but... well, we... you and I, we're not... We're, we're not what, Carlotta? We're not the kind of people who, who who assist gangsters, killers. At one time, Mike Perry did me a favor. Now he's calling it in. But the law, the law, Edmund. Yes, yes, I've thought about it, and... Well, sometimes you just have to. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's not the point. Are you telling me that we are going to shelter this murderer? I'm telling you I have no alternative as a man of honor. Honor? What has honor got to do with this hoodlum? How can you pervert the word honor? Honor is a personal thing, Carlotta. He's come here to destroy you. But I owe a debt to the roommate I had in my senior year. Now, please, Carlotta, try to understand. I hope it's okay to come in. Oh, yeah, sure. Sure, Mike, come in. Uh, Carlotta, this is Mike Perry, very old friend. How do you do, Carlotta? Well, I must say, Eddie, your taste has improved since we were undergraduates. Mr. Perry, my husband is under the misguided impression that he is somehow obligated to you. That's his affair. If I had my way, I would call the police. You would? Why? You stand for everything I find evil, vicious and depraved in our society. Well, surely... Not everything. Uh, well, darling, why don't I help you with dinner, huh? I'm particular with whom I break bread. If you care to feed Mr. Perry, you'll find something in the refrigerator. Meanwhile, you'll excuse me, I have a headache. You know, Eddie, I don't think she likes me. Uh, good morning, dear. I prepared breakfast. Just coffee for me. Where's the gangster chieftain? I put him in the spare room. Uh, Carlotta. Yes? Carlotta, there are certain laws that one does not violate. The law of hospitality. And? And it doesn't matter who a man is or what he does if he's a guest under your roof. He's a guest under your roof, Edmund, not mine. Good morning. Morning. Did you sleep well, Mike? I always sleep well. Oh, one might think you have a clear conscience. Like some breakfast? Well, I can help myself, thank you. Oh, I've been up for hours. 
I did some pages. Now I'll cast a few flies, sharpen up for the tournament, and maybe catch a few rainbows for lunch. Uh, well, I'll, I'll see you both later. Well, alone at last. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Perry. Oh, no, no, don't go. If my presence is so distasteful, I'll leave the table and have breakfast later. Thank you. Tell me, Carlotta, why do you hate me? <laughs> you flatter yourself. I have contempt for what you are. But hate, that's too important an emotion to squander. Well, I'll say this for you. You don't squander it. You invest it very carefully. You lowered the boom on me last night. And you said I was everything vile and evil and depraved. It's true. Well, it's immaterial. Those are only words, but uh, I saw something that you didn't see when you said that about What do me. you think you saw? The flush in your cheeks, the fire in your eyes. Well, of course. I was angry. Yes, I know. But show me a person who really hates something or someone. I'll tell you why. They hate because they're afraid. Afraid of what? Of themselves. They know, they instinctively know, they're fascinated by that something or that someone. Are you saying that I'm fascinated by you? Aren't you? No, no, don't answer that right now. Because you're probably not aware of it. Just yet. Oh. Hello? Morning, Miss Churchill. Oh, good morning, Sheriff. Mr. Churchill about? He's fishing. Is it important? Well, uh, uh, just tell him I gave Frank Miller his entry fee. And he's all set for the contest. Yes, I'll tell him. Oh, uh, is there any news about the escaped gangster? Not a whisper. Although they do think he may be headed toward this part of the country. Oh? When it comes to hiding out, this is as good a place as any, and better than most. Keep an eye peeled, will you, Miss Churchill? Well, of course. Bye now. Goodbye. Thank you. For what? For not calling in the hounds. Had I told the sheriff you were here, I'm sure you would have killed me on the spot. That isn't true. You mean you're not capable of it? Oh, no, no, no. Of course I am. But there'd be no point to it. They'd have me. Where can I go in this wilderness? But... But how do you know I won't call him back? I know. I know. Hmm. You've got a good highlight on the cliffside there. And your shadows are remarkable. What are you... What am I doing here? Well, I thought I'd take a walk. You're not a bad painter. What would you know about it? Oh, I'm quite a patron of the arts. Haven't you heard? Oh, I can imagine. No, 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 no. People like the Medicis and the Borgias, they robbed and they killed. Yet they practically financed the Renaissance. You know, you have delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Why did you quit? Quit what? The theater. I was never in the theater. Oh, that isn't true. I saw you in a play. It was ten years ago. I'll never forget your performance. <laughs> you have developed flattery into a fine art. It was a great performance. What happened? Nothing. Tell me the truth. I told you. Nothing happened. I had a bit part in an off-Broadway play. I had one scene and I stole the show. And the critics raved and... <laughs> and that was the end of it. It couldn't be. I never got another job. That's impossible. No, it's... It's the way things can work out or not work out in the theater. So I decided to go back to school and get a degree, maybe teach. And you married your professor. That's right. And you've been miserable ever since. That's not true. Now go ahead, tell me. Tell me you've been deliriously happy. Nobody is deliriously happy in this world. That's not true. I am. You? Oh, yes. Because I live. 
Every second of every minute of every hour. I have everything I want. But you can be shot down at any time. And you can get hit by a truck. You abdicated from life. I'm reconciled to it. Reconciled? You? I saw you on the stage. I saw fire and ice. Excuse me. Uh, where are you going? I'm, I'm going back to the house. I... Yes? I... Please, I, I said I'm going back. Well, of course. You know why? You're afraid. Afraid of what? Of this. Let go of me. Please, let go. Oh, now, who are you kidding? Let... let... Oh. Now I'll let you go. I despise you. Oh, sure. And now for the news headlines. There is still no word on the whereabouts of Mike Perry, who escaped from federal custody in New York last Monday. It's believed he may be headed west. Little Dolly Prescott, the teenage sex queen, is suing... Oh, not so good. Oh, they'll never think to look here, Eddie. You can't tell. Look, don't walk around in the open. They may be patrolling in helicopters. And how long shall we be honored with your company, Mr. Perry? Uh, darling, Mike is welcome to stay as long as he likes. Well, until the heat's off. I see. You know, Mike, I don't believe it. What? Well, everything I read in the papers. You should always believe what you read in the papers, even if it isn't true. You never killed anybody. No one could ever prove I did. You are the same guy I went to school with. Sure. I mean it. <laughs> well, I don't know what's gotten into me, but I'm writing again. Twenty-six pages yesterday, and nine this morning already, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back to that typewriter. Uh, will you both excuse me? Oh, sure. You know how it is when you're hot. See you good people at cocktail time. Well, I'll, uh, I'll have to get out of here. Where will you go? Well, don't tell me you care. I... You know, I have an idea. There's going to be some heat here. It's time to make a move. The big one. Well, I'm prepared for it. I got the place all set up. There's only one thing missing. You know what that is? I, I'm not interested. Well, you should be. It concerns you. Listen, Mr. Perry, get this straight. Nothing you do concerns me. You're coming with me. Where? Ah. I caught you. Your instinctive reaction was not to say no, but where? We're leaving the country. What makes you think... I want you. And I get what I want. It's that simple. And besides, you want me. What gives you that idea? As of right now, you don't have the courage to take what you want. It's all right, I'll help you. And what makes you think... I want you. You mean you want what you've got now? Eddie? This hermitage a million miles from nowhere? I... I'm happy. Oh, yes. Doing what? Every year that goes by is wasted. Soon you'll be old. Too old. Where are you running to? You see, your problem is with timing. You quit the theater too soon. You stayed with Eddie too long. Make your move. Now. You'll never get another chance. Please. Please keep away from me. Why? Because... Be because, because I'm of... right, huh? You know the poem? Full many a flower was made to blush unseen and waste its fragrance on the desert air. Don't waste the fragrance, baby. Don't. Mike, I... I... That's better. Oh, that's much better. What about... What about Eddie? Eddie? Oh, we'll take care of Eddie. What are you saying, Mike? I'm saying we'll just let things work out. No, 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 no. Don't move. Edmund. 
Shh. Let me just finish this paragraph. I know just how I want to say this, and if I stop, I... I... Carlotta! What did you do? I want you to listen to me. You could have torn that paper. Edmund, please. Please, I beg of you. Pick up that phone right now. Why? Do it. All right, all right. Now, when the operator comes on, ask her to give you the sheriff's office and tell Sheriff Parker that Mike Perry is here. Carlotta, how can you ask me... I won't ask you again. I should hope not. I won't have the strength. You know, I don't understand you at all. Please, call, please, before it's too late. Too late for what? Too late for what? Nothing. Nothing. You mean you became so excited over nothing? I tried. Oh, Edmund, I tried. Whatever happens, at least I did try. If at first they don't succeed, some people will try, try again. On the other hand, there are others who quit. And there's a lot to be said for both points of view. Will she try again to convince Edmund? If so, how hard? Everything will be revealed in good time when I return shortly with Act Three. Friendship can form the strangest pairs. And one of these is Edmund Churchill, a writer of nature books, and Mike Perry, a notorious gangster. Right now, Mike is hiding out in Edmund's secluded mountain home. And far from being bored by the solitude, he is quite happy. Why not? Edmund has a lovely young wife. And as they say, all's fair. And then Mike said to the professor, Sir, there is every reason to believe that the Arthurian legend is based on fact. Furthermore... Furthermore, I must have been a bore in those days. Wait, wait. What is it? Hear that outside? It's a car. Who is it, Edmund? Coming up the hill. It's the sheriff. What would the sheriff... Mike, go to the spare room, quickly. All right. Oh, Edmund, get the ashtray. Get rid of it. Everybody knows we don't smoke. But it's no good. The smell will still oh, be in the... Oh, okay, okay. Give me one of Mike's cigarettes. Yeah, okay. Leave the pack on the table, and I, I'll say I started again, if you notice. No, wait. Wait, something must be wrong. What? I don't understand why. God. Edmund, the table's set for three. Uh, come in. What did you say, Carlotta? The table is... Oh, uh... Hello, Sheriff. Hi, folks. How's that casting arm, Mr. Churchill? Oh, it's, it's first rate. Well, you people having company? Table set for three, I noticed. It's lunchtime. I saw your car coming up the hill, so I set another plate. Join us? Don't mind if I do. Mmm, that platter of roast beef looks great. <laughs> uh, Sheriff, what's going on? Well, tell you, I figure Mike Perry's going to head this way. You do? Why? Because he's that type of person. He does the unexpected. Goes where you'd never dream to look for him. But to come here? Every place else is red hot. And my theory is he's headed this way. Hmm? Oh, I see you started smoking again. Yes, sir. Ever since this this thing started, I've been so nervous. I just... Oh, there's nothing to worry about. Well, when... We're not worried, it's just... We're going to patrol this whole area. On foot, in cars, by helicopter. We'll get him. That is, if your hunch is correct. Well, I got a feeling. It's more than a hunch. It's based on a pretty fair analysis of all the known factors. Now, could I trouble you for a slice of that terrific roast beef? Morning, Carlotta. You slept late. Where's Eddie? Oh, fishing. Hmm. That's become a big thing with him. He's got the contest coming up on Saturday. We have to get out of here. 
Mike. I don't like that sheriff. Oh, he's just... Just what? A hick constable? Don't sell him short. He makes smart moves. But where could you go? Where could we go? Remember that we. Well, where? Out of the country. But what's the good? You'd be extradited. What for? Well, for... I'm not wanted for crimes like murder. All I have on me is income taxes. Maybe embezzlement. There are plenty of places where they can't extradite you. But... Come with me. But... Edmund. I said we'd take care of Edmund. No. Carlotta, come into a new world. The world of the people who have power. It's a world where rules have no meaning. But Ed Edmund's such a good person. Good, bad, they mean nothing. You do what must be done. And I'm not sure that I can. And stay here. Oh, Mike, I... Where we're going, I have a palace, a yacht... There's nothing you can't have. Name it, it's yours. But I... I don't want... just the thing. I'll buy you a theater, your own theater, your own company, act, star. Oh, Mike. Everything, I, anything, Mike. yours for the asking. This is my world. I want to share it with you. But what's supposed to happen to Edmund? Edmund... Edmund must be taken care of. You mean... killed? There's nothing personal involved... I even like Eddie. No. There's no other way. When he finds out we're gone, he calls the sheriff. Now, look. I've been told there's only one road out of these mountains. Yes, it leads right through the main street of Council Forks, 20 miles from here. Well, we'll have to chance it. No, no, it's dangerous. At night, late, I'll wear a hat. I do look a little like Eddie. We'll be moving pretty quickly. Yes, we'll go as soon as it gets dark. The stores will be closed. No one will be on the streets. But Mike, it's still a three-hour drive through these hills before we get to the turnpike. Suppose the sheriff should call here. He won't. Oh, how can you be sure? Call him. And here's what to tell him. Sheriff Parker speaking. Oh, uh, Sheriff, I... I just called to tell you we're leaving. Leaving? When? This evening. Uh, we received a call from Mr. Churchill's agent. He has to be in Hollywood by tomorrow afternoon. Will we be seeing him on the screen? Uh, well, you'll be seeing characters from his book. Well, good luck. And we won't be back for... Well, I don't know how long. Well, maybe it's for the best. Might have been dangerous if that gangster fellow showed up. Well, we'll see you when we return. Goodbye, Sheriff. Bye now. Oh, uh, tell Mr. Churchill I'll get back. Miss Churchill? Miss Churchill? Well, I guess she hung up. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can catch them when they come through town. I'm not sure. Of what? Of... Oh. Of anything. Come here. No, that won't help. Yes, it will. Oh, Mike. I'm so frightened. You should be. You know why? You're crossing the line. Promise me you won't hurt Edmund. Of course. Are you packed? Yes. Okay. When he comes in, you go out to the car. I'll... You won't hurt him. Promise. I promise. Well, greetings. Well, just in time for a drink, Eddie. Oh, I'm in great form. Shame you can't come to town with us Saturday and watch the contest. Well, <laughs> I'll keep him in. <laughs> Fix you something, darling? Who? Me? Join us? Uh, I don't think so. I... I feel so... Uh, it's a little stuffy in here. I think I'll get a breath of fresh air. Uh, uh, listen, Carlotta. I, uh... I appreciate this. What? Well, what you're doing. It's plain. You have no use for Mike, and you're going against your code of morality. I, I know it's uncomfortable for you, but you're doing it for me, and 
Well, I think you're wonderful. Goodbye, Edmund. Goodbye? Where are you going? Oh, just for a walk. Well, Mike, here's to us. Yes, Eddie. To us. She's right, but she doesn't understand how it used to be between you and me. Of course not. But after this is over, after this is over, we're finished, Mike. We square. If that's how you want it. It can't be any other way. That's right. It can't be any other way. Mike? Mike, what are you doing with that gun? Hmm? Well, you see what I'm doing. I'm aiming it. Mike? Mike, why? Because I have no choice. As you said, it can't be any other way. Oh, why? I, I mean, why do you want to kill me? I don't want to kill you, Eddie. I have to. And therefore... Mike! Uh, Mike, it's, it, it's me. It's Eddie. If you stand still, Eddie, you won't feel a thing. Mike! No! Ah! Yes, I killed but him. But you promised, you promised. I promised I wouldn't hurt him, and I didn't. Oh. He died instantly. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't think, I didn't realize. Yes, you did. You did. No, I don't, I don't want to go with you. You have to go. You have no choice. You just crossed the line. Hold me close. Ah, oh dear. Please. I have to drive with two hands, especially when we go through town. Oh, slow down, slow down. The local cops love to pick up people for speeding. Hmm. Not much of a town. Well, we chose the right hour. All the stores are closed, the people have finished dinner. The movie won't break for at least an hour. I'm so nervous. It's all right. Everything's all right. Edmund, I... Oh, I'd never stop being sick. You'll be okay. Up ahead. Is that a police car? It's the sheriff's car. I think somebody's in it. Well, we... We have to go down this street, but... Well, why not? He can't suspect anything. It's dark, he won't recognize me. Look, as we go by, you wave at him. All right. There's nothing to be scared of. Now, give him a loud, cheerful goodbye. And a big wave. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Miss Churchill. There. You see? There's nothing to it. We're in the clear. You don't have to look back. Mike, he's pulling away from the curb. Well, okay, that doesn't mean he's after Mike, us. Mike, he's following us. Now, don't panic. Oh. Maybe he's heading someplace else. Nowhere. This road leads away from town. There's nothing for more than 80 miles. He's after us. Why? I I don't know What why. do you mean you don't know? You know everything. Shut up. He's after us. Look, he's gaining on I us. I lose him. He wants us. Oh, God. Hold the wheel. Hold, oh, hold the wheel steady. Steer. Don't shoot at him. I've got a gamble. If he hasn't no. radio yet, I can stop no, it. No, don't. Steer to the right. No. Hold the car steady! Oh, please! They're firing back at us! They're shooting back! Get away from the wheel! Get away from the wheel! I'm hit! I... Move away! And I have with me here the man who captured the fugitive gangster Mike Perry, our own Sheriff Pete Parker. Sheriff, what's the story? I, um, I didn't know anything. I saw them drive by in the car, and I thought it was Mr. Churchill with her. And since he was not going to be here for the fly-casting tournament on Saturday, I wanted to give him back his entry fee. After all, it was ten bucks, and that don't grow on trees, you know. <laughs> course not. But that ten dollars discharged the debt. 
And while we don't know who did win that fishing contest the following day, the grand winner should be Sheriff Parker, who caught the biggest fish of all the night before. <laughs>